YouTube, welcome back to the Blaze to Be Shop and another project video. A couple videos back, I made this locking bow manual locking piece for a Saab 9.3 convertible top, and I just kind of prototyped it, made one, made it partially on the CNC machine, and then kind of finished it out by hand since I was just making one of them. But there was a little bit of interest in this part, so I need to make a couple more. And hey, if you need one and you're interested, contact me, and maybe I'll make a few more after that. But the bottom line is, for this video, we need to go from a prototype making one of these where it was half CNC, half manual, a little bit time consuming, and we're gonna to try to increase that production a little bit, clean up the part a little bit, clean up our programming, and go into, you know, not full on production mode, but we're gonna go ahead and make two of these today, and I'm gonna have a decent program where I can make multiples of two in the future. So first, we'll go up to Fusion, we'll take a look at where we were in the design, what we're gonna program, and what we're gonna to do to continue this on. I've got a chunk of material here, we'll get our stock cut, and like I say, we're gonna work on patterning the part in Fusion so I can make two of them. Uh, make a jig plate so that we can flip it over and machine the backside, which I didn't do last time, and go through all those steps. Now, it sounds like it should be pretty easy. We've already got the design done, just going to have to reprogram it a little bit. So uh, let's see how many mistakes we can make along the way into just upping it from initial part to a little bit more production run. Since I already know a little bit about what's going to happen in the video, uh, I know that this turned out to be a little more challenging than I thought, and uh, definitely make a few mistakes on the way. So stay tuned and you can check out what those mistakes look like. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to get out there, take a look at the other videos on machining, welding, knife making, Fusion 360, just everything else we've got going on here in the Blades to Be shop. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the channel, drop a comment, we'd love to hear from you. All right, let's go ahead, let's head up to Fusion, let's take a look at our design advancements, the programming advancements that we're making moving forward in this part, and then we'll get back down here and start making some chips. Let's go up to the office. All right, so let's pick up where we left off on our prototype on this part. Last time I made this, I really only machined the top side, the back side, all this contour. Cut that out by hand, and I just hit that on the grinder instead of making the extra pieces and parts that I needed to be able to flip it over. Even the, the counter bore, I didn't even put that into the drawing since I just did that manually on a, a manual mill. So I kind of halfway designed this, did all the complicated parts in Fusion, all these contours, and did all those complicated parts on the CN and see and then just finish the backside finish the contour by hand we look at the manufacture part of that i had a, a setup number two but that was really just doing a quick face off the backside so i could make sure i set it down flat and all the cnc work was just done on this top side and what was there so the good news is we had a good drawing we had a good design just had to make a few adjustments to it and then go through and make some extra parts to be able to flip this over and increase the productivity and just really increase the quality of the part a little bit so what did that look like? I duplicated what I had here into another drawing in Fusion. So I duplicated that part and started making my adjustments from here. First thing that I did was added the counter bore onto the back side so that we could machine that. Also, I think I adjusted the size of these posts slightly. They were just a little bit off on that first drawing. So we tweaked those, then created this jig plate. As I mentioned before with the other part, I first flipped it over and just manually cut the counter bore in there. On this one, we wanna be able to flip it over, machine the back side of it, and then after we machine in the counter bore, I'm gonna be able to bolt it onto this plate. I've got the two alignment holes for the posts. I'll be able to bolt it onto this plate and actually machine that outer contour rather than grinding that by hand. So that's what this jig plate is. You can see how I kinda of have them lined up here. So I just did a projection, so I projected those holes, all three of those holes onto my jig plate and that made it pretty easy to make the matching jig plate and get all that lined up. Pretty simple drawing to add that part of it. Most of the extra work then comes on the manufacturer side of it. So first off with our part, you know, again, I only designed one of them. So we're going to go through this manufacturing piece of it and let's open these up a little bit. So for setup number one, we're going to go through and machine out two of these, but you can see I've got a pattern here. So every time I'm machining something, it's machining what I configured onto the part and then it's going to duplicate that a certain number of inches over here on the pattern. I've got some other videos out there with a little more detail on how to go through and create a pattern. It's just a quick way to set up and cut two parts on the same piece of material. So we're going to go through, cut the pockets out, cut out the posts, go through and do this machining. I'll show the sim on that here in just a second. And then our setup number two will be we're going to flip the part over 
And once we flip the part over, we'll face it off to our thickness, and then we're also gonna go in and counter bore that. I'm gonna make sure I probe the same side. I flip my part over, probe in this same corner. The other way around, probed on that corner. We're gonna probe over here again and reverse the pattern. So now I'm moving a couple inches over the other direction. Once you know the distance on your pattern, it's pretty easy to move that. So that's what's going on with the counter bore. Pattern that over to hit the second one. And then for the next setup, we are going to bolt it into our jig plate. So remember the jig plate is built around these two steps right here. We're gonna drop it into that, bolt it in place where it sits flat. Got that bolted into the jig plate, and now we can easily hold on to it to cut our contour. So we've got the contour set up to work off of one of these holes. So for the first one, we'll just kind of line it up. It'll make all three holes. If I want to use that jig plate in the future, I can go in and probe off of that bore that we're going to create right here and makes it very easy to set that jig plate up to use it again in the future. So quick contour on there, quick finish cut to go in. And then our last setup over here is actually making the jig plate. So let me turn the model on for the jig plate. And very quickly, we're just gonna go in here and bore these two holes, drill, tap the jig plate, and we'll be set up. So let's take a quick look at the simulation on all these parts. Zoom this back out a little bit, we'll be able to see the pattern. So the first facing operation, pretty basic. If we simulate this next step, we're gonna see we're gonna go through, speed that up a little bit. We're gonna cut all these out, and then I set it up so that it minimizes number of tool changes. So every tool that it's gonna use, it's gonna go over and duplicate that on the pattern on the other side. So we go through and do that part of it. We'll flip the piece over, face off the backside, run those counter bores in there and should be good there. And really the next step is gonna to be to create our jig plate. So we're gonna to have to go through and make the jig plate. So the jig plate, we're gonna bore out these holes, drill and tap, take our finish cuts. We're good there. And then the last step is gonna be to go and cut our contour on here. Go around that profile and finish off the part and then drop a nice little bevel on there so it looks all nice and professional. So that's what I've got lined up on here. Already had a good design, went through, made some adjustments to the drawing, adding the counter bore, and modified my stock size so that I could go in here and make two parts at the same time, up production a little bit, and make it work a little bit better. So now that we've got our stock size, if I go in here and look at my setup on here, for the stock, we're gonna use a piece that is 4.1 inches long, and I measured the width of what I've got, and it came in at just over two inches, so it's two inches and 41 thou wide, and it's a little over three quarter inches in thickness. Average is at about seven, you know, 0.772, so it's got a little bit of variability to it. So that's what we're looking at. We're gonna go down and hit the saw, cut off a piece of our stock material, and then let's get this in the Tormach, start making some parts. See you back down in the shop. We'll get our stock cut to length. We're starting with some two inch by three quarter inch 7075 aluminum. Cut that to the 4.1 inches that we set up as our stock length in Fusion. And then we'll get this over to the Tormach. We got that piece off the bandsaw. We've got it all loaded up in there. I set it up, I probed into this corner. So I just did my probe for my Z, my Y, and my X. We've got that set up. Use my setup sheet here to make sure I've got all the correct tools loaded. Got all those in there. And I've got tool number 13, 17, 19, 44, 50, and 57. So we should have all our tools loaded and we are ready to go ahead and knock this out and hit go. So it should be making two parts for us in here. We programmed for one and then we do a, did a pattern repeat for the other one. So we should knock two of these out Cycle time on this is about 27 minutes. So I think it took, uh, yeah, it was about 15 minutes to make one. So 27 minutes to make two. So we're knocking about three, three and a half minutes off by making two at the same time. All right, now we've got our file loaded in there. So we should be cutting two of these out of that block. All right, let's go ahead and hit go.
we got those two roughed out. They turned out looking nice. They fit on our piece, hardly wasted any material. But last time I, when I made my very first prototype, I was about a thou and a half, almost two thou under on these post diameters. So I went back, remeasured, and realized I had even drawn them a little bit wrong size. So I made them the right size on my drawing this time, and now they're coming out about a thou over on that top post and a thou and a half, almost two thou oversized on that bottom one. So before we pull this out of here, um, I'll tweak the original program in case I make this again, but I'm gonna go do a quick program just to do a better finish cut on those two posts and go like, uh, you know, I'll go a thou under on the top one, I'll go two thou undersize on that bottom one to make sure that we get those finished correctly. I don't wanna send these off to the customer and then have them be too tight of a fit in the part. So we'll make a quick tweak to do that before we flip it over and do the backside. But otherwise, I'm gonna let the rest of this program run and we'll finish the hex and the holes in there, bevel these top edges, and then we'll just do another quick program to redo the finish cut on the outside of those two posts. All right, so we need to go down there and we need to take a little bit more off of the diameter of these two posts that came out just a little oversized. Originally, those were getting cut as part of this overall 2D pocket cutting out, and you can see it was kind of spiraling down to cut those. So I added in these two circular cuts. So one circular for the bottom step, one for the top, and I found that that worked a little bit better. Let me zoom in a little bit there. You notice that on the circular, it wants to go over and it wants to go all the way down to depth, move in, go around, take a finish cut all at once and move out. The default, if I went back to a contour or a pocket, is it wanted to spiral all the way down around the outside of that. And I didn't think that was gonna be a very good finish cut. So by going up here to this circular option, was able to select the whole face. And again, it goes down to that full depth. You select the whole face, goes down, gonna move over and take one cut around that to finish that off. So I'll show you what that looks like on the simulation here. And then I think we're set up. We'll go back down to the machine. And here we go. This should go down, make our one pass around the bottom post. Gonna do that obviously for the pattern and hit that on the other side. And then we're gonna go down and same, full depth, go around, take our skim off, finish pass off of those. And that should give us the size that we want. Let's go ahead, head back down to the machine and get this knocked out. All right, I got that updated file loaded. We're just gonna go in there and touch the outside of those pins. So as you saw up in Fusion, could have done the bore down on the outside, but I didn't want to sit there and spin around all that. So we should be going in and taking just one side mill cut all the way around just to tickle those down to the size that we need. Should be a pretty quick op.
right, let's see how we did on just tweaking these down just a tiny bit. All right, we're at 67, so it went about a thou under, which I was at 69, so it took just a hair more than I wanted, taking that second finish cut. And then down here on this one, I took two thou. I'm trying to get to 312, and we ended up about 310, so. Trying to go in there and tickle the finish cut off, we ended up taking a little extra. That's all right, at least I know it's not gonna get stuck on the customers. Let's go ahead and get this flipped over and knock out the machining on the backside. All right, I wanna make sure I flip this the right way so that I'm probing that same XYZ spot as I did when I was doing the top side. All right, we got our piece flipped over. We kept with that same edge to probe it. So we're probed off of this corner. Gonna face it off, put the two countersink holes in there, and then we'll be ready to cut it out and finish that profile. <laughs> All right, another little screw up in my programming. When I drilled that hole through from the other side, now that I added the countersink to the drawing, which I didn't have the first time around, when I drilled the hole, I let it just go to the bottom of the hole, which is actually gonna be where the countersink starts down there. So that hole didn't come all the way through. My countersink bit isn't designed to cut through the middle, so it really needs that starter hole. Well, let's take a look at where we messed up on that hole depth and what we've got going on here. So on that hole depth, there we go. I had that set up. And if you look, you can clearly see that we don't have that hole going all the way through. I've got the hole going to the bottom of the drilled hole, which does not include the countersink. Computer did exactly what we asked it to do. It went to the bottom of the hole, but that is not actually what I need. So let's go in there and edit that to make sure that it's fixed for the future. So if we go to the heights, it's going to the hole bottom. And instead, I could put that to go to the model bottom and then go through 20 thou. That would have put it all the way through where we needed it to go. So that is what the issue was. And once we face that off, then that's going to go all the way through. It would have cleaned up. We'll be able to put our counter bore on the backside. Uh, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and we've got our part flipped over. I'm just going to add a step in where we're going to drill it from the backside before we counter bore it. So we'll just add that step back in manually to take care of it for this time. And we have fixed this for future production of this part. Let's head back down to the machine. Let's get these holes plugged in there. So I went back up, adjusted the program so that we're going to drill that hole from the backside and then we'll go in and countersink that. Go reprogramming something and testing it out. Lots of room for making those little mistakes along the way. We got that backside all done. Counter sinks are in there. Uh, maybe just a hair deeper than we could have gone. The tip is broken off on my counter sink tool, so I do my best estimate on setting the depth on that. So that is gonna be good. So now we'll get these out of here. We'll cut these out on the bandsaw. We'll get our jig plate in there and then we'll finish off the outer contour. I'm just about ready to wrap this up.
right, there we go. Ready to profile those back on the mill. Got our jig plate in here ready to go. And I just put a mark on there. That's what I'm gonna to probe to get the Z height, which is most important. If I use this jig plate again, I'll actually probe right off of the bore that we're gonna make. But for right now, I just put a Sharpie mark on there, get the piece roughly centered up on here where I know I've got clearance around the edges. We're gonna bore those two holes, drill and tap our screw hole in there, mount our pieces, and go ahead and finish the contour on them. All right, so here's what we're making, just three tools. We need the end mill to bore it, drill and tap for that 1224 hole that we're gonna put in there. Got that loaded up, we'll go make those two holes. Make the third hole to drill and tap. Should be a pretty quick operation. We're looking at about a minute and 18 seconds to make this. All right, so pretty fast op, and it's a little snug still. Whether I use the old piece or even one of my new ones on there, it'll just it'll get started in the hole, but it's not ready to go all the way down. I'm just gonna rerun it again at that same size and see if it takes a little more out of there on the finish cut. If not, I'll go up and adjust the program and have it bore that hole just a little bit oversized. <laughs> So I just let it run that same program again, didn't make any adjustments, and that is just a nice fit in there. Locks down pretty solid. So we're gonna get our screw in there, get that mounted, and then we'll just cut this outer profile on here. And we should have a finished part. All right, we're locked down. Gonna be another, again, very quick program as we just clean up that outer edge, and then we're done. Grab that big end mill. Well, now that I have flipped this over and done the contour on the machine instead of hand grinding it like that first prototype I made, let's go ahead and put a chamfer on there and make that look professional. Just add a quick op in there and let's get that a cut. That 
That looks a lot more professional now with a little chamfer on there. And we'll just do the back side of that chamfer by hand. our two parts complete we've got chamfer on the back side of here just to break that edge off chamfer the back side of that hole and we are ready to get in there for our last step is just to hand file that hex to make sure that we can sharpen up those corners a little bit and get that eight millimeter hex wrench to fit in there so file this out and we are ready to go Just about there. Oh -ho. Got the first part through, so we're close. There we go. I would say that is a pretty nice snug fit on there. Should be good. There we go, we got that filed out. Cleaned up those corners, got that to fit on our eight millimeter Allen wrench, or five sixteenths. And that is part complete. Let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Well, YouTube, that's a wrap on another video here in the Blades to Be shop. Hope you enjoyed it. As we went through, we got a couple more parts made for this locking bow for the Saab. We got our jig plate done, so we improved the production on this part. We improved just the overall quality of this part a little bit. And bottom line is, you know, we worked through some challenges and fusion. For those like me who don't go through and you're not programming CNC every day, day in and day out, just every time you jump on that computer, you really have to pay attention to detail. There's all these little things, the, the depth of cut, the bottom of the hole versus bottom of the part, just lots of little things that can catch you up, trip you up along the way, or at least they can for me. So always lots of learning and first time running a program, you just always have to be thoughtful and really thinking about what's gonna happen. Be there babysitting the machine until you know exactly how a part is gonna run. So I feel pretty good about this program. If I need to turn around and make two more parts tomorrow, I think it would run pretty smooth. So if you need one of these parts, if you need a locking bow for your Saab 9.3, hey, go ahead, hit up my website. They're posted out there for sale on the website. I'll put a link to my website in the description on this video. For those of you new to the channel, I encourage you to get out there, check out the other videos on machining, welding, knife making, Fusion 360, just everything else going on here in the Blades to Be shop. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, drop a like, drop a comment here on the video. Until next time, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own. I'll be here in the Blades to Be shop working on that next video. Till I get that one out, y'all take care.